I'm presenting an article I recently published in the Yale Journal of International Law on the phenomenon of so-called closed camps uh, that impose restrictions on freedom of movement and other human rights to such an extent that um, these sites often start to resemble uh, open air prisons. This research is maybe not exactly on the theme of the panel, but I, but I think it's still indirectly related by examining um, how states respond to security concerns presented by populations that were governed by armed groups after those groups are militarily defeated. So. Uh, this work comes out of my recent uh, service leave of absence from academia, um, where I was working as a policy advisor for nine months to the UN in Iraq on efforts to repatriate uh, Iraqi nationals who are among more than 60,000 uh, people, including Syrians and, and third country nationals who, um, have, from more than 60, 60 countries who have been stranded in camps and prisons in northeast Syria since 2019 on suspicion of having family or other ties to the Islamic State. I'm now uh, back to academia trying to make sense of what I learned from this time working with humanitarian practitioners and policymakers. And this short article is, is a first attempt to outline some problems and questions that I plan to explore further in the coming years. And, and since this is an interdisciplinary group, I'll also just note that I'm, I'm both a political scientist and a lawyer trying to work at the intersection of those two fields. So uh, this uh, paper is, is a bit more aimed at a, at a law audience, but I think it raises some empirical questions uh, that, that hopefully are also of interest to social scientists. So there's an inherent tension between the fundamental human right to freedom of movement uh, and the establishment of camps to provide temporary housing and humanitarian assistance to migrants, um, which has been the UN's primary strategy um, in camp, and I mean for, for managing migration since the establishment of UNHCR and IOM after wor World War II. All camps impose some degree of limitation on rights, including movement, uh, and UNHCR actually calls this the defining characteristic of a camp. Uh, and international law does allow states to restrict migrants uh, free, uh, freedom of movement uh, for a narrow set of lawful purposes, including identity verification um, and security screening in situations of war, emergency, or, or other grave and exceptional circumstances. Um, but importantly, there, there are some uh, very clear limitations. Um, these restrictions need to be proportional, non-discriminatory, and time limited. In practice, however, states and non-state actors are increasingly violating these requirements by operating closed camps that in some cases resemble open air prisons in all but name. Closed camps are defined as supposedly temporary sites from which migrants are not free to leave or at least their exit is significantly restricted to some degree. My uh, paper focuses on the particularly troubling example of Al-Hol camp located in the autonomous uh, region of northeast Syria, currently controlled by the predominantly Kurdish Syrian Democratic Forces. And shown in, in the photo on this first slide, um, this is a closed camp um, uh, fr from which residents are not free to leave. Um, uh, UNHCR is providing tents and some assistance to the population, but there are major gaps um, in unmet needs. So residents of this camp uh, have no access to formal education co uh, or court um, in very limited health care. They're also at risk for human rights violations, including gender-based violence, human trafficking, uh, and extrajudicial killings by other camp residents, including known ISIL sleeper cells, as they're called, who are, are living among them. The UN uh, primary response to this crisis has been to urge the more than 60 uh, countries with nationals in the camp to repatriate um, those people as soon as possible, but, but countries have been very slow to do that over uh, security concerns because the camp's population is severely stigmatized over its purported, as purported associations with ISIL. Fear of uh, instigmatization of the population in El Hol has been driven by um, overly uh, sens simplistic and sensational narratives uh, and media coverage over of the camp, um, with some local and, and uh, international media outlets describing it as, as a mini caliphate or emirate. In reality, the population is much more complex and, and diverse, including not only ISIL supporters, but also many victims of ISIL's crimes. Uh, those victims include hundreds of Yazidis and Turkmen women and children who were enslaved by the group, uh, as well as Sunni Muslim women and children who were involuntarily trafficked by their husbands or other male relatives uh, through deception or coercion, um, as well as more than 10,000 Iraqi refugees who had fled to Al Hol uh, during the first Gulf War, um, long before the existence of ISIL, and had no association with the group prior to being confined uh, and, uh, and exposed to the influx of suspe suspected ISIL affiliates um, who arrived in 2019 during the, the nearby fighting to recapture the group's final territorial stronghold in, in northeast Syria. 
So uh, closed camps like Al Hol are a relatively recent development in the modern migration management uh, regime, as shown in this table with some very rough data I'm starting to collect on um, the prevalence of these camps over time. Um, so, uh, which, which shows that, um, uh, so, so the first closed camp was established by Hong Kong's government in 1982 to receive migrants and refugees fleeing Vietnam. And since then, the number of, of camps, um, of countries operating closed camps has increased uh, steadily. Um, and although some of these clamps, camps have closed, uh, even more new camps have been opened. So I estimate that uh, there are currently at least 20 closed camps operating in the world today. I identified two factors that I believe have contributed to the rise of closed camps. The first is um, the increased frequency of subnational conflicts, particularly weak and, in weak and failed states. Uh, such conflicts have become more common um, since the end of the Cold War and, and tend to result in high levels of internal, internal displacement. And then the second factor is the growing securitization of systems and policies for um, uh, managing uh, transnational flows of uh, so-called mixed migrants, a, a term used to describe diverse populations that may include asylum seekers, economic migrants, um, as well as victims of, of human trafficking and also potentially criminals. So when state authorities are faced with a challenge of determining the identities and, and possible criminal uh, liabilities of large numbers of mixed migrants um, who may include uh, suspected members of a, de of a designated terrorist organization such as ISIL, um, they have tended to respond with collective and overbroad measures that indiscriminately restrict the movement of an entire populations. Um, such measures often include closed or, or partially closed camps. Um, some closed camps allow a uh, limited freedom of movement in, in and out. So for example, uh, Tanzanian law allows uh, refugees to leave camps, but only within a radius of four kilometers. Uh, other closed camps like Al Hol impose severe restrictions on, on freedom of movement um, that approximate detention. Um, and at the most restrictive end of the spectrum are actual uh, migration detention centers, which are generally distinguished from closed camps by their reliance on administrative detention, um, usually ordered, or it should be ordered by some administrative or judicial authority, whereas closed camps can find migrants in conditions that, uh, that often amount to detention but, but lack a legal or administrative basis. Closed camps are not well defined or regulated by international law or the UN, uh, and their legality has increasingly been called into question. In 1995, uh, a report by the UN Economic and Social Council cautioned uh, that the preconditions of lawful detention in inter uh, of internally displaced persons in closed camps remain unclear, and they identified this as a clear gap uh, in international law uh, and also recommended some future international instrument to provide clear guidance on, on the UN's engagement with such camps. But to date, there has been no global UN-wide guidance on, on minimum conditions uh, that closed camps must meet in order to comply, to, in, in order to, uh, to receive UN assistance. So, um, although some individual UN um, uh, agencies at the country level have provided sort of ad hoc um, uh, specific guide, guide, um, recommendations for specific camp situations. Um, so it, it including uh, guidance on um, uh, certain rights and, and conditions that need to be fulfilled. Um, those include access to education, um, healthcare, documentation, courts, uh, as well as the ability to communicate um, and, and have contact with family. Uh, but in the absence of oversight and accountability mechanisms, uh, the states and non-state actors um, who manage such camps have um, generally violated those conditions with impunity, including an out hole. So just a few uh, conclusions and questions for future research. Closed camps are, are one of many examples in which states' concerns about national security have been allowed to override fundamental uh, human rights to movement and due process. Uh, so it's true that some residents of Al Hol um, likely have committed crimes for which they should be held accountable, um, including a number of known uh, ISIL officials who have been arrested in the camp, uh, and other unidentified armed actors still at large who have committed an, uh, a number of murders, arson attacks, and other violent crimes in the camp. Um, but the mass confinement of a very diverse population of, of more than 60,000 people uh, on the basis that some of these uh, individuals, perhaps a small minority of the population, um, may have committed crimes, it becomes increasingly difficult to reconcile um, with the requirements of international law uh, the longer they are confined, um, which is, is more than three years in the case of El Hole. <laughs> 
and in addition to their uncertain legality, I, I argue that closed camps may also worsen uh, those same security risks that they seek to contain. So when migrants are collectively stigmatized and treated as security threats on the basis of their perceived but not necessarily actual uh, association with a criminal group, um, rather than, than on the basis of, of their individual liability uh, under prison-like conditions um, in which their, their humanitarian needs are not met and, and their um, dignity and human rights are routinely violated, the resulting grievances tend to increase the likelihood of criminality and extremism in a kind of negative um, uh, feedback loop that is well documented in this literature. Closed camps raise a number of questions and concerns that were beyond the, the scope of uh, this small article, but, but I plan to f explore in future work. So um, although purportedly temporary, closed camps have several features that contribute to their long-term ter uh, persistence um, and perhaps permanence. So some residents of closed camps are unable or unwilling to return to their areas of origin for reasons including lack of, lack of documentation or fear of prosecution. Uh, children are, are increasingly being born in closed camps without birth certificates or proof of citizenship, uh, which then puts them at risk uh, for statelessness. Uh, and countries of origin may oppose the repatriation of their citizens, as has been the case with El Hol. So um, historically, closed camps were uh, intended to serve as, as te uh, temporary transit sites for screening and verification, um, verifying the identities of migrants um, in preparation for their onward movement, um, whether repatriation to their countries of origin or seeking asylum um, in, in a third country. Um, but a whole is an example of a closed camp that, that serves a contrary purpose uh, of um, uh, what some scholars have called warehousing uh, migrants who really have nowhere else to go. So um, in conclusion, although the UN has provided some guidance on, on minimum conditions, including education, healthcare, documentation, courts um, that should be provided in closed camps. Uh, th those ca conditions are, in practice, difficult or impossible to achieve in contexts like Al Hol, um, where the UN uh, has, has very limited ability to monitor um, the compliance and, and provide services for other sort of political and security reasons I discussed more in the article. Um, but I do think there's a risk that the UN's um, guide, previous guidance on, on minimum conditions in some country settings, um, if not enforced in camps where the UN is, is actively providing humanitarian assistance, like in El Hol, um, runs the risk of legitimizing indefinite detentions um, and other uh, violations of international law sort of under, under the guise of um, encampment, um, when it is in fact sort of more like detention. So um, I'll stop there um, and um, uh, look forward to any questions.